23 Minecraft things you should use more often. With every Minecraft update, there's the big stuff that everyone talks about, and then the other smaller features that fall to the side. But today, we're talking about those neglected bits, because to your surprise, they might just come in handy. And hey, the YouTube coach told me no one's ever subscribed to the channel using the kneecaps. So, unless someone stole yours, bump your patella on that red sub button down below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one. Looting is one of the quintessential enchantments in Minecraft, which means it's a bummer when it's only limited to swords. Or so you'd think. You see, if you chuck your looting three sword to your offhand slot, then you can use something like a bow and still have the enchantment applied. And from where I'm standing, that's all upsides, folks. Not only do you save from damaging your prized weapon, but you also gain a bunch of range. Sure, you still do have to walk in close to collect the items, but look at the alternative. If you're asking if I'd rather walk up to a creeper and fight it, or just pick up a pile of gunpowder, I think the choice is clear. Number two, water bucket saves aren't much of an option in the nether. And while some people would opt to use hay bales or something to MLG clutch in the lava scape, I think there's a much simpler option. You see, even though the nether isn't much for water, boats are a different story. By putting together one of these, you can hop in and simply maneuver your way off any cliff you find in front of you. Best yet, when you reach the bottom, no harm is done to your legs. And hey, if you're really wanting a showboat, then you can definitely try to pull off the classic pro tactic of getting in and out of the boat repeatedly. And then we'll all have to admit, it does look pretty cool in the process too. Number three, anvil costs can get annoying pretty fast. I mean, all it takes is a few enchanted books in the wrong order, and bam, it's too expensive to use. And this can get remarkably frustrating when you go to repair something. So before you find yourself in that hassle, maybe try this. Apparently, by just renaming the tool every time you go to repair, it's enough to stop the repair cost from jacking up each time. At that point, the game treats it as a simple name change operation and forgets the rest. Just some minor change like adding a space or a number to the end is good enough. It does not need to be fancy. Trust me. Number four, when you're starting out, every bit of food that you can get your hands on counts. So to make sure you're getting the best deal out of your three piece combo meal, let's play it a little smart on the resources and just use a flint and steel instead. Look, not only does this save you coal and wood for other necessities like torches and the like, but it also saves you the time of not having to cook a perfect medium rare down the road. And folks, that's the reason why speedrunners opt for this option instead. It's quicker, saves you fuel, and besides, you'll need a flint and steel for the nether anyway, so why not have some fun with it beforehand? Number five. Water travel is a funny thing in Minecraft, because on one hand, Mojang's added plenty of different ways to travel the ocean, what with conduits, dolphins, and boats. But on those other occasions where you're stuck to going one block deep water in the swamp or something, it could be a real chore. That is, unless you got a bucket in hand. As it turns out, looking down with an empty bucket and holding right click is actually faster than normal moving. Yeah, I guess those brief moments of dry air really do make a difference. This might save you some valuable seconds when you're going around getting chased in shallow pools. Number six, pigs and carrots are not exactly a popular form of travel by any stretch of the imagination. But what they lack in land speed, these porker pariahs might just make up for in the skies. As it turns out, by switching on and off of a carrot on a stick item while riding on the swine, it can actually cause the mob to fall slower. This pork parachute might actually save you in a future manhunt. But before you go and try this out with your local pig, you might want to keep this in mind. As soon as you get close to the ground, you have to be off the pig before you land. Otherwise, it's going to be you as a pile of items right next to that dead pork chop. Number seven, say you wanna fill up a huge cube of water. Maybe for an aquarium, a squid farm, whatever your purpose is, I won't judge. You just need a big chunk of water filled in with source blocks. If that's the case, here's a method that's sure to save you some time. By placing columns of water source blocks in a pattern like this and then updating them, then soon enough, you'll get the entire area filled just like that, which is definitely a lot less pain than trying to fill up every single block with just a handful of buckets. All you're gonna need is some kelp, some precision, and enough time to make Make sure that this entire desert turns into a regular oasis. Number eight, if you're looking to get even with another player on the server, you might need to get creative. Because as any PVP player will tell you, all it takes is a bit of armor in the equation and suddenly your sword and axe is doing a lot less damage to the person. So to circumvent that entirely, how about we spend a bit more time and work on the potion side? Instant harming potions aren't just good for witches. These things can actually damage through armor, which means that a direct hit from a splash potion of harming two can basically melt through your opponent's health bar even if they got on netherite. Who knows? You might not even need a sword. Number nine, spawn proofing is a definite pain in the brain. And oftentimes without the help of third party mods, it can be hard to tell what you made safe and what isn't. So to save yourself from just squinting to try and read the F3 debug menu, there might be a simpler option. By going into the game settings and knocking down your brightness to the bottom level, all of a sudden your problem areas get a lot more clear. And then as soon as you have this turned down, it's just a couple of torch placements and then you can hop right back up to your 
regular brightness. But now you won't have to worry about having some creeper spawn where you don't want it to. Number 10, everyone's had this moment. It's late, you return back from a mining trip to go and stash some of your hard earned materials, and then only to have a creeper spawn from the shadows and blow up the whole thing. Look, even if you didn't lose any items, it's still a pain to have to put everything back. And it's one that we can avoid by just adding a few drops of water. You see, when you waterlog something, it keeps the properties of a water source block. Meaning that just by pouring a water bucket on your chest, that sucker isn't going to explode anytime soon. I see that as a small price to pay for indestructible chests. This is a lot easier to clean up. Number 11. Getting enough wither skeleton skulls to summon the boss can often be a hassle. I mean, even if you go through all of the effort to get a perfectly enchanted looting three sword for the job, at best, you're still only getting a 5.5% drop chance. So if you two are sick of these games of chance, then a surefire solution that most of us tend to look over is a charged creeper. That's right, folks. They also work on the wither skeletons too. Just set up a creeper farm, charge them up with a trident, and then ship them over to the nether. Complicated? Yes. But with a 100% drop rate, at least you know it pays off. Number 12. Saving resources when you can is always a good idea. So before you've collected piles upon piles of coal blocks to use for smelting, this might save you a couple mining trips. While campfires are admittedly the middle child of cooking, they do have one key feature that puts them above the rest. For an upfront investment of charcoal and logs, these things will keep burning until you tell them to stop. And fortunately for you, that means you get a bunch of long-term benefit when you're trying to cook up some food. So take the time to smelt up that one piece of charcoal. That way you can save your later fuel for the mining trip sure to come. Number 13, nobody likes silverfish. They don't have a special drop or anything, so there's no incentive to kill them. So at the very least, if we have to deal with them, how about we make it a bit easier to get rid of them? Man, while well, swinging at them with a sword does work, that's almost guaranteeing that a few of their friends are gonna join the fray. So to prevent that, let's use a flint and steel instead. By burning the suckers, it's treated as environmental damage, and that'll keep the rest of their buddies at bay. Look, I wouldn't exactly say it makes fighting them a joy, but if you're giving me the choice of fighting just one or an entire dozen, I'd rather just fry them. The guy. Number 14. Water sources are a pretty nifty thing to have around, but they don't always match the aesthetic of a build. So to keep that big cube of blue from messing with your vibe, a simple solution is to use a waterlogged slab instead. You're still able to fill up your buckets and bottles as you would, but to any bystanders, it's just going to blend in with the rest of the floor. And hey, as an added bonus, if your creeper rolls around there, you can rest assured that that spot isn't going to go up in smoke, making this a safe, sleek, and sneaky option. And folks, that's not only a lot of S's, but it also makes for a pretty great combo for your future base. Number 15. Starting a farm is often a big undertaking. So whether you got that potato from a zombie drop or it's the only one you have left over from a village trip, the fact still stands that you're going to need a lot more of those things to get the farm going. So to help out on that, that Fortune 3 tool that you got in your hotbar isn't just good for lapis and diamonds. No, it can actually increase your crop yield as well. Sure, just how much that increases averages out to just be about one more per block, but Folks, as you grow to a big farm, that can add up really fast, giving you more spuds to plant and more to Fortune 3 down the road. Number 16. Even though fish farms got nerfed in 1.16, they're still a great source of XP. I mean, get a mending fishing rod at one of these things and you'll be able to AFK to your heart's content. But why stop there? As it turns out, there's even a way to get more juice out of this machine. Wouldn't you know it, but just by throwing down a grindstone next to this whole mess, you can squeeze out extra levels from the various pieces of enchanted gear you get along the way. When you fish farm as much as I do, you got chests upon double chests of the stuff just lying around doing nothing. So instead of collecting dust, I'd say Say, let them do the work for you. Number 17. For most of us, fences are a necessary evil. Sure, it's frustrating that you can't jump over it, but the other mobs and such can't jump over it either, making them pretty necessary for an enclosure. Or so you thought. If you place a trap door and flip it up like such, then none of your pigs, cows, or sheep will be busting out anytime soon. But what's a trap to them actually lets you jump over with ease. Though I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that crafting a trap door compared to a fence isn't exactly resource solvent. But hey, looks come out of price. And with the added functionality to boot, I'm definitely willing to cough up the planks. Number 18. I don't think I'm breaking any new ground by saying that mining fatigue is a definite pain to deal with. And while things like a milk bucket are a good one-time fix, when you're ready to an ocean monument, you're bound to get it again. So if that's going to be the case, here's a bit more of an all-around solution. Would you believe it, but honey and slime blocks aren't just great for flying machines, but they're also a solid pick for insta-mining down in the ocean blue. So if you got the farms to supply it, I highly recommend using these to clear out any air pockets. And then when you got those, you'll be treated to the regular sea level mining speeds that you know and love. Number 19. Inventory management is a stressful game in and of itself. 
So to alleviate some of that headache, why not just get yourself a pack mule? And no, not a literal pack mule. We can actually get crazier than that. After scoring yourself a fox friend, you're able to tie the fella on a lead and have it carry around an item of your choice. So what's to stop you from having to carry around something like a shulker box? That way you get plenty more slots of storage, 27 to be exact, and not to mention a buddy to also tag along in your future adventures. And honestly, I don't know which one of those is more worthwhile. Number 20. Unlike what Bob Ross told you, your mistakes aren't always going to be happy accidents. And believe me, nothing makes a mistake worse than having to waste even more time trying to fix it. So to get the blemish off your plate in a faster manner, why don't we just use the water for cleanup? Normally, these things are like oil. They don't mix well with water. But for our purposes, we can use that to our advantage. And just like that, wash away all the past mistakes with just one bucket. That way you get the resources back faster and you'll be able to start at square one once again without even skipping a beat. Number 21. Personally, finding little clever ways to mix around items in Minecraft is a huge joy to me. And one that recently caught my attention is mixing banners together with buttons. The way their hitboxes work, you can still interact with the button even if you can't see it behind the banner. And that makes this a very slick way to hide your redstone input wherever you want it in your base. So far, I haven't heard of anyone checking behind banners yet, so you might want to get in this trick quick before people start to catch on. After all, we wouldn't want another hidden door behind the painting trick on our hands. You know what I mean? Number 22. When you're looking for materials in Minecraft, you're going to have to branch them out a couple times. And while that's fine, it doesn't always feel like the fastest. But lucky for you, there might be a way to fix that. The way that it works in Minecraft, you actually mine faster when you mine at max reach distance instead of right up close. Taking that into consideration, maybe take a couple of steps back and save yourself some time. After all, if you're going to be digging into straight line for a while, why not at least shave off some seconds where you can? And while I can't guarantee this will improve your luck finding diamonds, I can at least say it'll help you find out faster. Number 23. Elytras are a beautiful thing, but because they're so rare, it can often be tough to let everyone try out the wings. So until your friend scores their own pair from the end, how about you help out with a free ride? By tying your wing itself to a saddled pig, you can use the power of flight to bring both you and your friend in tow. So whether their elytra just broke or they're a plebeian looking for a boost, this is a fully functional way of doing an elytra ride share. Now, this might kill a couple of pigs in the process, but if you ask me, that's just free bacon at your destination, just as soon as you're able to pull it off. And with that, folks, dust off that lesser used red sub button below and have a good one, all right?